Hey, Chemstars, this is Mrs. Vandalay bringing you Chemstar video from section 7.3. This is number five. So finally, we are putting this together. Um, we talked earlier about that sand sculpture again. And so how do we actually convert between uh, particles and then moles, if you will, to mass and the volume? We talked about, you know, perhaps using, uh, weighing the sand sculpture and taking the volume of the sand sculpture. So this is this is how we're going to do it for the mole okay so we are going to interconvert between the mass and the moles and um, on the second page we're going to be uh, converting between volume of a gas and moles so what do we need we need moles and again we need a molar mass that was from the last unit isn't it so anyway, uh, can you get out your periodic table with the uh, polyatomic ions again and your calculator again? All right, you need those things, so uh, go get them and come right back. All right, so moles to mass relationship, we are going to factor label. This is what we started this whole unit doing, it was factor labeling. Uh, we needed factor labeling to convert between number of particles and moles, and we need it again for the moles and the mass relationship, all right? So you're going to use that molar mass, what we used in the last uh, video, of an element or compound to convert between the mass of a substance and the moles of a substance. So what is the mass of 9.45 moles of aluminum oxide? Well, if I need the molar mass, I need the formula, don't I? So what is the formula for aluminum oxide? Well, is this ionic or is this covalent? I see aluminum. Aluminum's a metal. It's going to be ionic. So what do I have to know? I have to know their charges. That's right. So what's the charge of aluminum always? Plus three. Now this is oxide. Is it um, polyatomic or is it a binary? If it's oxide, is oxide on your polyatomic ion sheet? Uh, no, it's not. So it's off the periodic table, it's binary. So what is the charge of uh, oxide always? Negative two. I bet you have that memorized about by now, don't you? So do the charges cancel out? The answer is no. So what do you have to do, everyone? Criss cross. So what is the formula for aluminum oxide? Hmm, isn't it Al2? O3, manage how the charges crisscrossed, right? So now I need the molar mass. So I need uh, two aluminums and three oxygens, all right? So I needed two aluminums and three oxygens. So what do you get? Get your periodic table or, you know, get your calculator and, and, and calculate. What do you get? I got 101.98. All right, that's part one. We got to answer the question now. We got the molar mass, all right, of aluminum oxide. Now we need to use it to factor label and determine the mass of 9.45 moles of aluminum oxide. All right, so here you go. Uh, how many grams, right? What is the mass? The unit for mass is grams. So whenever you see what is the mass, you're going to go question mark grams equals. Well, what's my given? Nine four or five moles, all right? So what do I do now? I need that. Folks, what unit must go on the bottom? Moles, why moles? So that the units cancel out, all right? So now I want grams on top. Grams is your molar mass. Grams comes from your periodic table. So this number, goes here. Don't you remember what our definition of molar mass was? It is the mass of one mole. It is the mass grams of equals one mole. So notice what happens. My uh, moles cancels out. What unit is on top? Grams. That's the unit I want. So now what? We're going to take our number 9.45 and am I going to multiply or divide by 101.98? You're going to multiply. It's on top your times. All right, so got your calculator. What is 9.45 times 101.98? Go for it. All right, I got this. Now, Mrs. Vanderbilt, do you really need six numbers in your answer? The answer is no. So I have how many numbers here? Three. So I need three numbers here. Nine, six, three. Does my three need to round up? 
Uh, yes, you do. All right, real quick, why don't these numbers uh, play a part of your sig figs? Because these are your given. Uh, these are not your calculated. Well, you calculate the molar mass, but they're, they're, they're always going to be. The molar mass of aluminum oxide is always 101.98. You can look it up on a, on a chart if you want to. This is your measured quantity. So your given always determines your number of um, grams, okay? Or your number of sig figs. Let's go do the next one about ca uh, carbon disulfide. All right, so what is the mass? What is the grams of 0.76 moles of carbon disulfide? Well, first of all, what do you need to know? You have to know the formula of carbon disulfide. It is covalent. Don't worry about the charges. Write down what you see. So how many carbons do you see? One, what's di? Two, so your formula is CS2. So what's the molar mass of CS2? I have one carbon at 12.01. I have two sulfurs at 32.06. And when I add them together, I get 76.13 grams. All right, I got part one done. Now what? I must factor label. So I'm looking for what is the mass? How many grams are equal to 0 0.76 moles? So now what? What unit? Or what do I do next? I put this thing here. What unit must go on the bottom? Everyone? Moles. Why? So the units cancel out. What goes on the top? Grams. That's your molar mass. Notice how it's the same number. Why? Because guess what? I want to cancel out moles. What unit is left? Grams. Grams on top, and that's the unit I want. Folks, this is a definition of molar mass. Grams equals one mole. This is how many grams are in one mole, all right? So now what am I going to do? I'm going to take 0.76 times 76.13, and this is what I get. Now, Mrs. Vandewey, that's six sig figs, all right? Do I need all six digits? The answer is no, I need two. So I got Hopefully you're working these through as well, that you are not just copying down my work, that you're thinking through, why do I set it up this way? How do I multiply this or divide it? Uh, why do I need that many sig figs? That kind of stuff, all right? Well, let's look at number three. What's a little bit different number three? They're asking for moles this time. So let's see how number three works out. All right, so what is the first thing I need? Well, first of all, how many moles? I'm looking for moles. There are 92.2 grams, so I need molar mass of iron 3 hydroxide. Well, what else do I need? I need the formula for iron 3 hydroxide. So what do you do? You figure it out. Pause this. Come up with the formula, please. All right, it's ionic, you need a charges, so the iron is plus three, how do I know that? Roman numerals, hydroxide, that's on your chart, isn't it? Hydroxide's not on the periodic table, hydroxide's on your polyatomic ion chart. So the charge is negative one. Do the charges cancel? No, so what do you have to do everyone? Chris, cross, so I got FeOH3. Why is there parentheses around the OH? Because when I crisscrossed, all right, when I put the three down below, that means I have more than one hydroxide. I have three hydroxides, so I need parentheses. That is so important. Why? Because when you find your molar mass, you have to distribute that three throughout. So go ahead and you calculate your molar mass. Go ahead and do that for me, please. So pause this and do it. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you figured out your molar mass. Uh, this is what I did. I found one iron is 35.85. Three oxygens are uh, three times 16. And when I add that all together, I got uh, 103.85. All right, so how is this one different from the problem above? The problem above, I was asking for mass. This time I'm asked for how many moles. And what am I given? I have 92.2 grams of uh, iron three hydroxide. So just like before, I need to do this, but what unit must go in the denominator? Well, what unit is this? It's grams. 
So what unit goes in the, in the bottom, the denominator, it is grams, all right? And what goes on top? Moles. Why is that the case? Because grams cancels out, moles is on top, moles is what I want, all right? This is still molar mass. One mole equals of iron three hydroxide, 103.85. How did I do that? I found it on the periodic table and I calculated its molar mass. So now what do I do? 92.2, do I multiply or divide by 103.85? You did a divide. Why? Because the 103.85 is in the, the, the denominator. So please, the, the divide, and what do you get? This is what I got. Now what? How many sig figs do I need? I need three sig figs, so I need to round up, and uh, the 0.8878 from seven rounds up. There you go. Let's look at the next amount, calcium phosphate. Okay, so how many moles are in 0 0.084 grams of calcium phosphate? What I'd like you to do is do the whole thing by yourself. So pause this. It may take a couple minutes, and when you are totally, completely done, come back. We'll see you in a bit. All right, are you back? Did you pause this, finish this, and now come back? Hopefully you did. Well, the first thing you had to do is know the formula for calcium phosphate. There are your charges, all right? So you had to crisscross, and there you go. So what's next is the molar mass. I had three calciums at 40.08. I had two phosphoruses at 30.94, and I had eight. How did I get eight? You had to multiply the four pi two to get eight oxygen so there's my molar mass all right and then how did i figure out the um actual um, number of moles question mark moles that's what they're asking for how many moles there you go all right 0 0.084 grams the unit of your molar mass grams are on the bottom so that the grams cancels out moles are on top i did a divided and i got a really really small number of moles and i wanted two sick big so here's my final answer all right, so let's wrap up what we know right now. If you want moles and atoms or moles and, and molecules, you're gonna use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you want moles and mass and mass and moles, you must know the molar mass. It sounds redundant, doesn't it? So what's my next page all about? Well, let's find out. This is the mole and the volume. So only, only, only if you have a gas at STP, what is STP? Standard temperature and pressure. Uh, in fourth quarter, we're gonna get into the gas laws and this will make more sense uh, because that can actually change if it's not at standard temperature and pressure, but for right now, everything will be at standard temperature and pressure. If we don't even say at STP, we're gonna assume that, okay? So we're gonna convert to the volume of a gas and moles, all right? So what is that volume? Let's look over here. At standard temperature pressure, the volume of one mole of what? Any gas. Does it make any difference? Not one bit is 22.4 liters. All right. So whenever you see liters, it's 22.4. If you see volume, you're going to use 22.4. All right. So let's see how the first one's set up. How many liters? All right. I can do that question mark liters are equal in 0.375 moles well that's my given i'm going to factor label so i need that fraction bar what unit must go on the bottom moles what unit must go on top liters if you ever see liters for these problems you must use 22.4 liters liters is 22.4 there's never an exception if it's at stp so what am I going to do? Multiply or divide? Well, where's the 22.4? It's on the top. So I'm going to times. All right. So when I do that, what do you get? Go ahead and do it. Well, that's interesting. I got 8.4. I actually did it twice to make sure. And I did it twice and I got 8.4. Why is that kind of unusual? Because how many sig figs are here? Three. How many are here? Two. Normally we have to get rid of digits, but this time I had to add digits because I needed three sig figs, so I stuck a zero at the end. 
All right, well, let's check out the next one. How many liters are there in 32.8 moles of nitrogen dioxide? Why don't you use this as a reference and you figure this out yourself? Go ahead and do it. Pause and do it. I mean it. Should be paused. All right, how'd you do? How many liters equals, this time I given is 32.8 moles. Uh, I'm factor labeling, so I have to do this. What unit goes on the bottom, everyone? I believe it is moles. What unit goes on top? If it's liters, it must be 22.4. If it's a gas and I want liters, you're gonna use 22.4. Am I gonna multiply or divide? Multiply, it's on top. So that's what I get. I don't need uh, five numbers, I need three. So I'm gonna round to 735 liters. Now what's different about number three? What are they asking for number three? They're not asking for liters, they're asking for moles. Let's see how we set this one up. All right, how many moles is equal to, what's my given? 25 liters. I am gonna factor label, so I need this next. What unit has to go on the bottom, everyone? I can't hear you. Yes, liters. So notice what goes with that. 22.4 goes with liters. What goes on top? Moles. Oh, so what am I going to do? Multiply or divide? I'm going to divide. Why? Because the 22.4 is in the denominator. So what's 25 divided by 22.4? This is what I got. Holy cow, I don't need that many digits. I only need two digits. So there I go. So why don't you pause this, use number three as a, as a reference, and do number four totally on yourself. So pause this and do it. I mean it. All right. Welcome back. Hopefully you paused it and not just waiting for me to do all the work. You need to be doing some of the work too, right? So I have question mark moles is equal to 0.8 liters. So what now happens? What has to go on the bottom, everyone? I mean, I need to scroll this down apparently, don't I? All right, what has to go on the bottom, everyone? There we go. Liters, right? Why? I need to get rid of this unit. So the 22.4 liters goes on the bottom. One mole goes on top. Am I gonna multiply or divide? Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm going to divide. So I need a really kind of small number here, don't I? And I only need one digit. So 0, 0.0, do I, what do I do with that three? Do I round up? Yep, and there you go, 168. So that concludes this video. Um, hopefully you're getting the hang of molar mass. Hopefully you're getting the hang of factor labeling. Hopefully you're getting the hang of when do you multiply and divide. And um, this is getting a little bit easier. If you don't, write down your questions and ask them the next time you see your teacher, okay? So don't wait to be great. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.